Hey guys, welcome to Golf Ball Attic. I appreciate you being here as always. Uh, so today I'm actually doing a review of the FlightScope Mevo. This is a personal launch monitor around the $500 range, best used for practice, things like that. And uh, honestly, uh, you know, if you watch my channel at all, you know that I've been using this for over a year now on my channel to give the results. Um, it's something that I wanted to review at the beginning a long time ago, but unfortunately I was having some hiccups with it. I just didn't feel comfortable putting out a review yet, but now I feel I'm at a point where I can kind of give my final judgment and verdict. All right, so let's start first with what you get in the box. So your box is going to look something like that right there. When you open it up, as you can see, you got the Mevo in there. And the first thing you might notice is it's very small. I mean, this, this is fitting in the palm of my hand. It's a very small device. Um, not much to it really. There's no display. You've got like a little battery, you know, up here at the top that tells you how uh, much battery life is left, whether it's connected Bluetooth. Um, looking on the side there, you will see that it does charge via a mini USB, which is a little weird. That's a throwback. That's like a PlayStation 3 controller <laughs> uh, charge port. That's, you know, definitely what we used a, a few generations ago. Um, but it's, it comes with the cable. So, I mean, it comes with one like that. Uh, down below, that is your uh, on, your uh, your power button, you know, on, you can hold it, 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 you know, it'll either turn it on or off or connect to Bluetooth, whatever, you know, depending on how long you hold it. And then, of course, you've got the little um, silver on the back that is going to allow it to stand up. It's a little stand, a little kickstand, pull it out, set it down like so, and then essentially that's what you're working with. You also, it is going to come with a nice little case as well, just a nice little um, sleeve case um, that you can put in there and protect it. Uh, nothing too special about that, but it does feel nice, and it's nice to have a case with it. I recently got a uh, swing caddy, and it didn't come. It was extra with that, so uh, having it included is a nice touch. All right, another thing you'll see is it does come with these. Now, mine are a little bit scattered and messed up, but these are actually metallic stickers. You use them essentially to put on the golf ball, and it allows the spin to be registered a little bit better. Light's going to reflect off of it, and your Mevo can essentially, you know, tell the RPMs per minute a little bit better is the idea how well the stickers actually work. I'm not sure to be honest with you. I've done it with them, I've done it without them, and I've never seen a substantial difference, but the company claims that if you put one on there, it's more accurate spin results. Um, so I usually 90% of the time try to put one on there, you know, unless it gets knocked off, which it does. All right, so let's talk about the setup now for setting it up behind you, you know, as far as if you're gonna hit it. Um, now, they claim kind of in the directions, this is where it gets really weird. So they claim that it's about six feet. I mean, you can actually, via the app, which you download, it's Mevo Golf, um, which you will have to have a smartphone or an app for this. This one does not just work. It doesn't have a display or whatever. So you do have to get all of your data from that. Um, but once you download the app, the app's pretty easy to use. Um, but it does claim that you can do anywhere from six to seven feet. It has a setting in the app to do that. But I will say that that's not 100% accurate. So I've actually been in touch with uh, Mevo's customer support recently. And uh, I was told straight from the guy who tests them all day himself, he says they are pretty finicky. So with wedges, they recommend four, four and a half feet. Um, with uh, normal irons, I believe it's around that six feet. And then with a driver, you're talking eight to nine feet. So it, all depending on the club you're using, it will allow, it will make you put it either back or closer depending on the club you have. Um, but what's really interesting about it is it doesn't say that in the manual. So it's very confusing. If you, I can tell you like I, for, for me, I played with it for a long time, six, seven months trying to figure out exactly where that right line was and still struggled. And then to have the guy go, oh yeah, it could be four feet, could be nine feet. It was like, well, why isn't that in the instruction manual? It's pretty frustrating, especially when you have a product that is finicky and you know the company will admit it's finicky. I wasn't too pleased with that, but the idea is you put it about six feet behind you, uh, right behind you in the ball, take your swing, and it will register some stats for you. It will register things like spin, things like distance carry, uh, things like smash factor, all, all kinds of things, ball speed, club speed. It has a, a really good wide variety of metrics, and not all uh, personal launch monitors do spin, so that's why I really wanted this one from the beginning, was so I could get those spin numbers for you. And for the most part, I'd say most of the numbers have been pretty accurate. Um, I, I haven't had really too many issues with the numbers at all the entire time I've had this thing. Uh, toward the end that happened, but I'll get to that in just a minute. But honestly, the numbers seem pretty good. Um, it has a pretty good battery life. I'm able to use it many times out there before finally coming in. I would say, you know, about four or five hours is what I get out of it usually, which is pretty good. So, I mean, you don't have to charge it. Um, I do think it performs best at its peak battery. I think if it's only got a fourth battery left, I feel like the numbers start to fall off a little bit, but that, that's just from what I saw. I don't, I don't know 100% on that. I didn't test it in depth, but that's how I felt. All right, and I will show you a little bit of the app here. Um, this is something I'm gonna just show on my phone. As you can see, um, when we pull out the app, 
It is called FS Mevo Golf. It'll come up and essentially what you do is, now there's two ways you can do this. One, you can just do it to where you're just getting numbers. You can also do the swing uh, video as well, where you set your phone up, it'll do a whole video with it, tell you what the numbers were, and you can see what the difference is in your swing video wise, which is very handy. It's nice to hit a nice flush shot, it, you know, the smash factor be all the way up there, and then also be able to see what you did, opposed to a shot where maybe, maybe it come off the wrong part of the club, maybe you just came a little out to end. You can go back and look at that. It's a very nice feature to have, and I didn't actually use that until later having it. If I go to settings here, you'll immediately see it has an outdoor, it has an indoor, it has a pitching. Um, this is tough because when I was in, you know, talking to Mevo customer support, they were telling me to play with all these different features. They're like, well, try it in outdoor mode, try it in indoor mode, try it in pitch. It was very difficult, and I haven't had that issue with the Swing Caddy yet. You know, the Swing Caddy's just been plug and play, so it's been a lot easier than that goes. Some of this is really confusing. You know, you put your altitude, how far you are up. Uh, distance to tee, like I said, you can do six to, to seven. It's uh, anywhere in there, but again, you're not going to follow that, so I don't know why it's in there. Um, you can do how your data displayed, what type of measurement you want, what data is in there on the front, and then, um, I mean, honestly, just there's a lot of different, and you have to just kind of follow the manual, but you can see down here at the bottom left, it says all clubs, and then you can go, you know, like I did nine iron and pitching wedge, so like nine iron, I had two shots, but I mean, it, it kind of puts all of it down there. What I really like is at the bottom, it'll tell you your averages down there, which is really good. So when you have a, a driving session range and you hit your six iron, you, know, you can go to the end and see what your averages were. And averages are very important because golfers a lot of the time will hit shots. You know, they'll hit majority of their shots 150 with their 7 iron and then they hit one 165 and they'll say, oh, I can hit my 7 iron from 165 and that's what they tell people. Not the same thing. Averages are definitely what you want. You want to know what it's like when you miss hit it. You know, you want that average. If you miss hit it and it's 140 and you flush it and it's 150, you hit it 145 and that's what I would count on. Um, so th this information I think is really good for that. And there's just so much good information to be honest with you. You know, your spin, your smash, ball mile an hour, you know, carry yards, club, all sort of that. Um, you can choose between the different clubs as you're using them. And it's very important that you choose the right club because the window that it's looking for is dependent on that. So if you're hitting driver and you have it on pitching wedge, your numbers are not going to be accurate because it's looking for a totally different type of, of ball flight essentially and it, it, it will not work. The numbers will be way off. Um, so ultimately what it comes down to if you saw my video before I switched from using the Mevo and, and there's a reason for that. Um, although the Mevo does have a lot of potential and it has a lot of great data I've had a lot of issues with it and I want to get into those right now because I do want people who are thinking about buying it to be aware. Um, the first problem I would say I have with it is it's not always a hundred percent great at reading shots. And when I say reading shots, I don't mean the numbers are off. I mean, it won't read your shot. I mean, you'll hit something absolutely flush, just doesn't read it, just didn't read the shot. Um, you know, and I've spent a year playing around with this. So before you go, oh, well, Nick, maybe you weren't, I, I've done everything. I promise you, I have done everything. I've sent this thing back for um, the warranty. I've, I've put it to the right of me, to the left of me, behind me, in front of me, above me, below me, dug a hole, put it in the hole. I've done everything imaginable to get these shots to read. And I'll be honest with you, there are some times, there are some days, and there's some golf balls, it'll only read about 50% of the shots. With the TP5, I've never actually gotten it to register a shot. I mentioned that in the video before as well, that I've, I've tried to review that for months, and, it, and no matter what shot you hit, it will not read it. Uh, some balls, even if you shank them into the ground, it'll read, but then you hit one flush and it won't. And that is so frustrating because the whole idea of this product is, well, to get data, hit the golf ball, it reads it and you get the data. If it's not reading it, then it's it's useless. Um, and there's been so many times I've been so upset trying to review a ball that should have taken 30 minutes and instead it took days, weeks, sometimes months. And that made it very difficult for me using it because it, it took away from my subscriber audience, you know, giving them the, the reviews they need, um, why they're there and why they're trusting me. Um, so ultimately I wasn't happy with that. The other thing that started to happen was is about after having it for 10, 11 months, I did notice the numbers started to go down. Now, my numbers with a pitching wedge are usually 90 mile an hour ball speed, and let's say around 120 yards carry with, you know, the pitching wedge. And that's that's been consistent with the Mevo since I got it. That's how my numbers have always been. Well, recently, all of a sudden, um, my numbers started showing up a little lower than that. They started showing up about 80 yards carry and about 78 ball mile per hour speed, which is a substantial drop off. And at first I thought, you know what, maybe it's me, maybe my swing isn't right, maybe it's something like that. Um, but no, I, I continued to hit some pretty good shots. I actually went out my backyard and hit a full shot and measured it. 
it was 120. What did the Mevo register at? 80. And that's, that's substantial. And the reason that's substantial isn't because we're not talking about five, 10 yard difference. We're talking about 40. You know, I, I was hitting 120 yard shot and it was saying 80. It took off 33% of my distance. That's not gonna give you any information. If your whole goal is to figure out how far you hit your clubs and to get basic data, it's not gonna help you if it's that far off. And I don't know why it happened all of a sudden, but I went through the process of turning it into warranty. I sent it to them. Three weeks later, they sent it back. They told me it was fine, and unfortunately, I went out and tested it again. I'm getting really bad numbers, you guys. I, I mean, the numbers are all over the place, and as much as I think that there is something wrong with this unit, I have to take the company's words at face value that it is okay. So I don't think it's entirely accurate all the time. I think, you know, if you hit enough golf shots, it is, but nothing like I've experienced with the swing caddy so far because the swing caddy's just been put it down, hit a ball, have a good time. And that is so, I cannot tell you how much nicer it is to have that. Um, now, a lot of people love the Mevo. I've seen great reviews. I've seen, you know, Golf Spy. I've seen Golf Digest. I've seen a lot of big name companies rave about it. I've seen a lot of local uh, golf courses start to put these in and allow you to hit them off the range to get data. A lot of people trust the Mevo. And for a while I did too. Um, so I, I'm not ready to, to not recommend it. Um, but I will say, be careful. Um, you know, as far as who's this product for, if you're wanting to get some data, I think it is a good product. A lot of people trust me though. Um, but be weary because I've had some issues with it. I've had it not registering shots. I've had it not, you know, so for me, it's like, what would I recommend this or the swing caddy for me it would be the swing caddy. To me, it's just so much easier and it just works a lot better. And it just, it's not as finicky. Those are the three main reasons I would probably have people stay away from the Mevo or even just think about it is one. It's finicky, and the company admits it's finicky. It's got to be perfect. Everything's got to align perfect to read a shot correctly. I think that's going to annoy a lot of people. Um, I think, you know, the numbers being off after a certain point, it kind of worries me. Um, not registering shots makes me want to pull my hair out. There's nothing worse than flushing the best shot of your life, turning around and smiling at the Mevo, only to just have it be dead silent. It's, it's absolutely, clubs have been thrown, Nets have been broken, you know, it's, it's just been, bags have been tossed. I mean, it's been so frustrating because it just will not read these shots. Um, so all in all, I think FlightScope has a good product. Like I said, there's a lot of people. Bryson DeChambeau uses the Mevo Plus. I think people trust them. Maybe I just got a dud, I don't know. But I, I can't feel really fully confident recommending this product to a lot of people. One, because it's $500. But also, I think there's a lot of comparable products out there that are more consistent, at least for me. Um, guys, if you have used the Mevo and you do love it, I would love to hear your story in the comments. Feel free to tell me that you haven't had any issues or if you have or you haven't, whatever. I'd love to hear that. Um, it's just an honest opinion from me. I think there's better products out there, but I appreciate it. I appreciate everything Mevo's done. The customer service has been great through this whole process and, you know, I've gotten a good year out of it. So, um, yeah, all in all, appreciate you being here, guys. As always, keep watching and keep saving.